Hey everyone, I'm going to demonstrate for you a subcuticular suture. Now oftentimes when we're suturing, you know, the skin, we're going to be in this kind of an angle with our, with our patient's laceration or incision, but when we're doing a subcuticular, it's much easier to be in this uh, kind of an angle working because uh, we're going to work from right to left, okay? Um, <clears throat> The subcuticular suture is entirely underground, uh, and the suture that you use needs to be an absorbable suture, and, and most commonly we're going to go with a, uh, a monocryl. Now, monocryl is a great suture for this, and uh, often and because it's this suturing technique is used when we're dealing with small or you know simple, well approximated lacerations or incisions uh, to avoid scarring. Then uh, we're we're going to want to use a, a 50 or a 60 monocryl. Now on this this model today that I'm going to be using, I've got it set up in the tension base so that it's open so that you can see better what I'm doing. However, please realize that when you're using a a subcuticular suture, it's best to be doing it uh, in on a, on a laceration or an incision that has the edges well approximated. But so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm, I put it on the tension base so that you can get a feel for it. So you'll see what I mean when I get going. So um, I have chosen to use a larger uh, black suture today rather than a 50 monocryl. Monocryl is a clear suture that's difficult to see. It's like very small fishing line. But anyways, to start this off, we need to anchor our, our suture. Now to anchor the suture um, anywhere within the depths of that uh, laceration or incision is just fine. Um, lots of uh, providers are going to do it in different ways. You know, they might start by reaching across and grabbing some of the subcutaneous fat. They might uh, uh, anchor it in different ways than I'm doing now, and that's just fine because the main purpose of this first throw is simply to create an anchor deep within the laceration or the incision that now, as we move, uh, our uh, suture is tied somewhere, okay? And so you're going to cut the tail very uh, small, leave the tail very small, so that as you as this closes up, your tail isn't poking out of the out of the skin. You want it to stay buried, okay? And so we're going to uh, let me get my needle loaded back up. Now on this next pass, um, I think it's important to uh, get. Uh, to load your needle backhanded because we're going to try to get back near to the apex at a very subcutane uh, up just underneath the epidermis and so i'm going to come across since my anchor is more on my side my next suture is going to be on the opposite and so i'm going to reach across in a way and then come up out of this uh tissue just under the epidermis see where that came through so i'm going to let that come out there and pull that across. Now, I'm ready to jump across to this other side. So our because this subcuticular suture is a continuous suture, basically what we're gonna do is make a zigzag back and forth. So because I'm right here, that means my next placement needs to be right here, okay? And so, and, and our suture is gonna continually go back and forth like a, a curving S shape all the way down. And can, as we're throwing our, our suture, rather than going from skin to skin, we're gonna be going underneath the epidermis in a plane and popping out again underneath the epidermis, then crossing into the same position on this side and back like this, okay? So that's our, and as it goes, we tighten it up and it will approximate the skin edges. So you'll see as we go. So again, I like to pull that across to see exactly where I should probably be going with my next throw. And the positioning is such that we're going to, now with my little tripod being a little bit in the way, this is a hard position, but you're gonna go just underneath the epidermis and it's going to be just under, just under, and then passing through, just popping out just underneath the epidermis. See there, how that's done? So let me grab, we'll pull that through. Okay, so it's going to pull that apex close together. Now I'm going to load it again, like normal, 
and because I've thrown another suture, I can see, okay, well, I need to enter on that other side exactly across, perpendicular. Remember that when we're suturing, we never want our pass to be going at an angle because then it's going to pull the skin at an angle. So you want to be going straight across. So I will be moving straight across here, starting subcutaneous, uh, uh, just under the epidermis rather, staying just under the epidermis and then exiting here a little further down on the laceration or the incision. And notice how when this pulls together, see how my, my suture now went straight across, it was perpendicular. So as I pull this, it's gonna pull the skin together like this. Okay, but I'm gonna leave it open and gaping so that you can see it as we go. This is one that we can tighten as we go or we can tighten it towards the end. And this one, if you're doing this in the operating room or you've got somebody with you that uh, can act as a, a third hand for you, then this, this one becomes very nice to be able to uh, uh, have somebody follow with you as you, uh, as you go. Okay, so again, I'd like to see, okay, well, I need to be coming in at about right there. So with this one, again, my tripod's kind of in the way here, so let me, the angle's hard. Now you want to make sure that you don't do what we call buttonhole, which is where you actually come out of the skin on accident and then go back in because then your, your absorbable suture has now just exited the skin. So make sure that you're staying underneath the epidermis and, but staying pretty superficial. So now watch as I pull this across again, my cross piece is perpendicular with the laceration. And I'm going to go again across the other direction but making sure that I'm coming across at that right spot. Okay. Staying superficial, but not buttonholing the skin. There we go. And there we go, perpendicular to the laceration. Okay, and you continually do this as you come down the skin. Now I'm going to leave myself some room at the end because I don't. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing when we close it. Uh, but again, coming right there, staying superficial, and there we go. So let me let me pull on this a little bit to show you how it starts to close. And so as we give this a little snug, I sometimes will reach up with my hands and 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 pull it together so it approximates appropriately but see how it's it's pulling the skin together it's the skin edges are being a little bit everted now I've, it's kind of opened up down here because my uh, my first throw actually pulled through uh, the the tissue here I've used this so many times uh, for making these videos that the, the actual subcutaneous fat on this model is, is starting to die on me but it won't happen that way with your patient's skin so uh, let me throw one more throw here and then show you how we tie these. So tying this is very similar to the way we do any continuous suture, okay, where we tie it to itself, but uh, we need to make sure that our knot can be buried. So I'm going to go one more throw here and coming out near the end. Now I don't want to pull that up inside that loop, otherwise it will lock it, so you've got to be careful there across like that and then I'm going to uh, with this next one be ready to tie it so because it's my last throw I'm actually going to want to go uh, keep my exit right near this so that when when uh, when I make that tie it doesn't bunch it up so I'm gonna take a smaller bite there okay now because I want to tie this I'm going to be able to tie it just like a little instrument tie here, but tying it to that loop, okay? So as I do that, now I should have pulled it a little bit tighter so that this closed it a little more. I was uh, focused on my knot rather than focused on making sure everything was tight. Oh, and actually my knot just uh, came through that subcutaneous tissue. Like I told you, my, my, my model's starting to die. I've been using it too much for these videos. But let's say I had uh, finished that off. Everything came together nicely rather than pulling out like on my dying model here. And now this is a knot that is deep. Now I need to bury that knot. So when you're closing this, the way you bury a knot in a subcuticular suture is we're gonna cut the, the one 
set of tails off like this, but I'm gonna leave my needle end attached because I still need to do one more throw to throw that knot down and bury it, okay? And let me show you what I mean by burying the knot. Because again, we need this is an absorbable suture, so we need that knot to disappear. So I lift up on this end and pulling it towards this far apex here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my needle in on this upper side of it, go deep in the tissue, and then I'm going to pop out down outside of the suit, outside of the laceration or the incision. Okay. So as I do that, I'm going to pull this out and notice that because that loop was up above, it's going to flip my my knot down inside. See and how my knot just disappeared? Okay. It pulled and tugged the knot down into uh, the incision and now I can pull up on this with some tension knowing that my knot is now buried and I'm going to cut this right at the skin and then kind of massage it so that works its way down into the subcutaneous fat but now my knot is buried all of my suture is underground and will dissolve well now because this is on the tension base and because my model's starting to die on me a little bit uh, the skin edges aren't quite as well approximated as I would like um, but I, I think the the point came across my my goal with this video is to show you that you now you can kind of see actually there that the this what it ends up doing is being the zigzag across that pulls the skin edges together and notice how everything is underground now everything is is under the skin and my monocryl is going to dissolve over the next cup next few weeks now after you've placed a subcuticular suture it's always good to use uh, some uh, some mastazole and some steri strips to give it some added strength because again the monocryl uh, subcuticular suture is not a strong uh, way to close the skin it's a, a way to close a very a very simple uh, small little laceration or incision in a way to minimize scarring so I hope this has been helpful. The subcuticular suture is is a is a tricky one that can uh, that's not that easy to perform. So good luck and and uh, let me know if you have any questions through the comments. Thanks.